Welcome to Approach to Blood Gases, Part 1. My name is Jason Wechter. In this presentation, we'll cover the first two topics, understanding pH and understanding the differences between respiratory and metabolic disturbances. pH stands for potential of hydrogen. The concentration of hydrogen ions determines the pH. A hydrogen molecule is one proton and one electron. When you lose the electron, you have a hydrogen ion, and so sometimes hydrogen ions are simply called protons. We're going to discuss that pH is a negative log function in the next couple slides. Remember that with exponents, 10 to the power of 3 means you have three zeros, 10 to the power of negative 3 means you have three decimal places, and 10 to the negative 7 means you have seven decimal spaces. We're going to ignore the first example and just look at the negative values with decimal spaces. An easy way to think about log function is that the log of 10 equals the exponent. So the log of 10 to the power of negative 3 equals negative 3. The negative log is the negative of this value. So the negative log of 10 to the minus 3 equals 3. And this is how the pH scale works. This means that a pH of 3 indicates that the hydrogen ion concentration equals 10 to the minus 3, which has three decimal places. A pH of 7 indicates that the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the minus 7, which is a much smaller concentration, seven decimal places. So the higher the pH is, the lower the concentration of hydrogen ions. So a higher pH means more alkalotic and fewer hydrogen ions. A lower pH means more acidic and more hydrogen ions. The human body has a pH of 7.40 and the extremes of a human pH range from about 6.8 to 7.6. In order to understand pH, we have to understand a tiny bit of chemistry. In this chemical equation, we have two compounds, A plus B are combining to create C plus D. If we reduce the concentration of compound A, the equation will shift to the left, and this will reduce the concentrations of compounds C and D. The same is true for compound B. If we reduce compound B, the equation will shift to the left and will reduce the concentrations of compounds C and D also. And the same is true for the right side of the equation as well. If we reduce compound D, then both compounds A and B will reduce because the equation will shift to the right. When the concentration of a compound goes up, it will shift the equation to the other side. If we increase the concentration of compound A, the equation will shift to the right, and this will increase the concentrations of compounds C and D. And again, this is also true on the other side of the equation. Increasing compound C will shift the equation to the left and will increase compounds A and B. We are now going to change compounds A, B, C, D into hydrogen ions, bicarbonate ions, water, and carbon dioxide. Note that we often abbreviate bicarbonate just simply to bicarb. In this solution of water, note that compound C has actually become water. It doesn't make any sense to dissolve water in water. So we're going to gray out H2O and we're going to ignore it. The rest of this presentation is going to focus on what happens when we manipulate bicarb or we manipulate carbon dioxide levels and as a result what happens to the hydrogen ion concentration in the solution. Consider a situation where the hydrogen ion concentration was increased and the acidity level 
went up. In order for this to happen, the equation would need to shift left because we are increasing hydrogen ion concentrations. What changes in the other compounds could make this happen? Well, if bicarb levels were reduced, this would shift the equation left. Or if the carbon dioxide levels were increased, this would also shift the equation left and create more acid. What do you think is required to reduce the hydrogen ion concentration and reduce the acidity? Well, the answer is the equation needs to shift to the right. This could be done two different ways. If we increase the bicarb concentration, this will drive the equation to the right. Or if we reduce the carbon dioxide concentration, this would also shift the equation to the right. Both of these processes will reduce the acidity. In summary, the equation can shift to the right or to the left. Changes in bicarb or carbon dioxide drive the hydrogen ion concentration up or down. To increase hydrogen ion concentration, we shift left. And this can be accomplished either by reducing the bicarb or increasing the carbon dioxide. To decrease the hydrogen ion concentration, we shift right. And this is accomplished either through increasing the bicarb or reducing the carbon dioxide. So in this equation, only two things can change the pH, a change in the bicarb or a change in the carbon dioxide. When changes to bicarb result in changes to the pH, we say that these are metabolic disorders. When changes to carbon dioxide result in changes to the pH, we say that these are respiratory disorders. A process of acidosis is when the hydrogen ion concentration is too high, meaning the body is acidic and the pH would be low. Alkalosis is when the hydrogen ion concentration is too low and the body is alkalotic and the pH is high. When measured in the blood, which is the most common way we measure acid-base disturbances, we use the suffix emia. Acidemia means acid in the blood. Alkalemia means alkali in the blood. The normal human pH range is 7.35 to 7.45, and the body tries very hard to maintain a pH of 7.40. A pH less than 7.35 is called acidosis, and a pH greater than 7.45 is considered alkalosis. And since we usually measure these values in the blood, we would refer to them as acidemia or alkalemia. There are four acid-base conditions that are very important to understand for acid-base assessment. Metabolic acidosis is when a low bicarb causes a high hydrogen ion concentration. And the opposite of this, a metabolic alkalosis is when a high bicarb level causes a low hydrogen ion concentration. Respiratory acidosis occurs when the carbon dioxide levels are high, causing a high hydrogen ion concentration, and the opposite of that is a respiratory alkalosis causing a low carbon dioxide resulting in a low hydrogen ion concentration. Just for a graphical representation, we see here a pH scale, and between 7.35 and 7.45, this is considered normal. Below 7.35 is acidosis, and above 7.45 is alkalosis. Looking at the four acid-base conditions and pH, when we have a metabolic acidosis, the bicarb will be low and the pH is below 7.35. A metabolic alkalosis, we have a high bicarb 
and the pH is greater than 7.45. Respiratory acidosis is a high carbon dioxide level and a low pH below 7.35. A respiratory alkalosis is a low carbon dioxide and a pH greater than 7.45. So in summary, there are four different acid-base conditions. Any changes to the pH due to changes in bicarb are called metabolic. Any changes to pH due to carbon dioxide levels are called respiratory. And knowing the direction that the equation will shift, either left or right, will predict whether the hydrogen ion concentration will go up or go down, and therefore will predict whether these changes create acidosis or alkalosis. This is the end of this presentation, and we have covered understanding pH and respiratory versus metabolic changes. In the next presentation, we will discuss compensation and mixed disorders.